Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one I decided to record because someone asked me about how for loops work in specifically in JavaScript. Uh, but I'm going to be talking about generalized for loops. And when I'm when I'm talking about for loops here, I mean kind of the four part one, part two, part three for loops. So what you would see in C, C++, JavaScript, and other places. I'm specifically avoiding range fours or for each loops or other stuff like that because uh, those are significantly more complicated. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so I'm going to start by writing just a very, very simple C++ program. And I'm only picking C++ because... Uh, <laughs> I have worked with it more recently than you know any of those other languages. Uh, and <laughs> I say right as I'm about to write var i. <laughs> um, so a for loop has three components to it. Um, i plus equals one. Uh, it has the initialization component, the check component, and the update component. And you'll typically see well, you usually usually see all three of these filled out, but you might not always see all three of those filled out. Uh, and I'm going to show you how this roughly gets translated into a while loop when it gets compiled, because uh, for loops are actually just kind of shorthand for a while loop. Uh, standard CL uh, got I standard end L, uh, and so this is just a very simple program: G plus plus T dot C plus plus. And if we run this, you'll see that it prints the numbers 0 to 9. And roughly the way that this executes is it runs this part once before the, pro, uh, before the block even starts. And then it runs the check. So it, val it sets i to 0. Then it checks 0 is less than 10. So if this is true, then it executes this block. Then finally it goes to increment. Uh, and it'll run this block, then it runs the check again, and then it does this. And so that's kind of how a for loop executes. So for instance, if I had set i greater than 10, the way this will execute is i will be set to 11. This will be false, so it'll never, it'll never execute this block here. And if we recompile and do that, you'll see that we get no output, and that's because it didn't execute. Cool. So now that I've showed you how it works, I kind of want to show you how the compiler can turn this into a while loop. If we combat this out real quick, and we try and write the same thing here. So we're gonna start by writing our initialization. So we have int i equals zero. And I guess to be specific with scoping rules in C++, this would be in its own block, uh, because otherwise this is in the outer scope here. So you don't have to worry too much about that there. Uh, next, we're going to write our while loop portion, and it's going to take our condition here, so i less than 10. And then it's going to have our body, so we take this from before and put this into our body. And then finally, it's going to have this update at the end. And this is, this is the equivalent while loop for this for loop up here. So if we were to recompile this and run it again, uh, you'll see that this executes exactly the same as the original for loop did. And so basically just showing you that for loop is a special syntax sugar for a while loop. Now the cool thing about while loops is oftentimes you can rewrite them as for loops. So you can kind of go the other way. Now it isn't a perfect rewrite in many cases, but I'm going to show you a simple example where I would probably use a while loop, but you can use a for loop instead. Um, and so in, for this example, we're going to write a simple program that just reads a bunch of numbers from the input until it can't read anymore and just prints them back to the output. So we'll do while cn reads to x, uh, cout got x, uh, something like this. So what's going to happen here is it's going to read an x, and then the return value from this read operation is the stream itself. And so then it's going to check, is that stream still in a good state? That's what this. Uh, while is. Of course, it's doing quite a lot on this one line, so I, I might not do that. Um, but I'll show you some alternate forms of this as well that would be uh, less, <laughs> less hard to read, I guess. Um, but while that stream is in a good state, it's just going to print that it got the number. And so if we were to compile this um, and then run it, it's going to input numbers. So if we, I don't know, 123, 10, uh, and if we put garbage in here, it's you know, it's going to exit out of this loop because the input entered a invalid state because we didn't try to read an integer and this was not an integer. 
Uh, but the cool thing about this is this can be transferred directly into a for loop, uh, assuming we take the same parts here. So we kind of have an initialization here, so we can put that into our for loop. Let's actually pretend we don't have an initialization, so we can just translate this directly. We have no initialization, so we just put a semicolon. Then we have our condition, which is also our update. So we can put this here. And we have no update at the end, so we just leave the end blank. And so this is a for loop that is pretending to be a while loop. And this will execute exactly the same as that while loop did before. If we compile this and run it. Uh, you know, one, two, three, ten, etc. And if we you know, garbage again, uh, don't do that. So you can see that <laughs> you can see that we can trivially transform a while loop into a for loop just by having no initialization and no update. However, you might want to take this initialization here and put it in here, um, and you may you know do this update actually differently. Let's let's do this just to show that this also works. Uh, uh, now going back to that original one where we had while cn reads to x, um, I might write this a little bit differently. Usually when I write a while loop, I do it in four steps. Uh, one being one being initialize, two being check, three being do work, and then four being update. And so in this case, I've kind of combined <laughs> a few of the things into here, and I, I don't really like that. So let's start with our initialize instead. So we do int x, that's kind of our initialize. Um, initialize, and then we do our check. So our check here can be while standard cn, basically saying, is the stream in a good state? Um, actually, we would want to do, <laughs> our initialize is actually two parts here. We want to do our first read as well. Uh, and then we want to check whether cn is in a good state. So we would do this here. Then we do, or this is our check. Then we do our work. Uh, do work. And then finally we do our update. And our update is actually the same as our initialize here. So we do, oh, these are mistabbed. <laughs> it's gonna drive me nuts, so I might as well fix it. Uh, our update here is actually the same as our, um, part of our initialize here. And so this might be how I would write it if I was trying to follow that same framework. And in this framework, this more directly translates to a multi-part for loop. And so if we wanted to do the same as this here, we would do for uh, int x and standard cn 2x. Can you do that in one statement? I don't know. We'll find out. Our check is just standard cn and our update is standard cn reads to x taking those parts from here as well. And then our work is the same as before. And we'll find out if this works. I suspect that it might not because of that comma, but we'll try it nonetheless. All right, let's compile. And it is unhappy. Can we put it in parentheses? I don't think we can do multiple declarations there. Okay, cool. Well. Assuming you could do that, you could put int x here instead. Oh, spoiled, spoiled my initializer. Oh well, that's fine. Um, you can't put multiple statements there. Oh, we have an int x up here. Oh, is that the problem? Was I just misreading the error message? Well, let's try this again. <laughs> int x. Yeah, you can't do that. A little bit ugly, but you can write that same for loop here. And you can see it executes the same. But anyway, that's uh, for loops and while loops and how you can kind of convert them between each other. I would never write code like this in reality because this is basically unreadable. Um, I usually try and leave for loops just for either iterator iterating or, you know, zero to n or some number iterating. And I tend to leave while loops for ones which do you know, more complex logic or more specific uh, parts to them, just because I find this much more readable than <laughs> trying to decipher what this is doing. Um, also, it seems a little bit weird that I'm duplicating this twice, but anyway, that's for loops and while loops. Hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.